Hi, I'm Rain. Welcome to our lecture series part 2 in Banking and Financial Institution. For today, I'd like to share about the structure of the financial markets. Now that we understand the basic function of financial markets, let's look at their structure. The following definitions of many financial market categorizations highlight important characteristics of such markets. A firm or an individual can obtain funds in a financial market in two ways. The most common method is to issue a debt instrument, such as a bond or a mortgage, which is a contractual agreement by the borrower to pay the holder of the instrument fixed peso amounts at regular intervals, together with its interest and principal payments, until a specified date, called the maturity date, when the final payment is made. The maturity of a debt instrument is the number of years, or the term until that instrument's expiration date. A debt instrument is short term if its maturity is less than a year and long-term, if its maturity is 10 years or longer. Debt instruments with a maturity, between 1 and 10 years, are said to be intermediate term. The second method of raising funds is by issuing equities, such as common stock, which are claims to share in the income after expenses and taxes, and the assets of a business. If you own one share of common stock in a company that has issued 1 million shares, you are entitled to one one millionth of the firm's net income and one one millionth of the firm's assets. Equities often make periodic payments, called dividends to their holders, and are considered long-term securities because they have no maturity date. In addition, owning stock means that you own a portion of the firm and thus have the right to vote on issues important to the firm and to elect its directors. The main disadvantage of owning a corporation's equities, rather than its debt, is that an equity holder is a residual claimant. That is, the corporation must pay all its debt holders, before it pays its equity holders. The advantage of holding equities is that, equity holders benefit directly, from any increases in the corporation's profitability, or asset value because equities confer ownership rights, on the equity holders. Debt holders do not share in this benefit because their peso payments are fixed. We examine the pros and cons of debt versus equity instruments as we progress in this course. A primary market is a financial market in which new issues of a security such as a bond or a stock are sold to initial buyers by the corporation or government agency borrowing the funds. A secondary market is a financial market in which Securities that have been previously issued, and are thus second-hand, can be resold. The primary markets for securities, are not well known to the public, because the selling of securities to initial buyers, often takes place behind closed doors. An important financial institution that assists, in the initial sale of securities, in the primary market, is the investment bank. It does this by underwriting securities. It guarantees a price for a corporation's securities, and then sells them to the public. The New York and American Stock Exchanges and NASDAQ, in which previously issued stocks are traded, are the best-known examples of secondary markets. Although the bond markets, in which previously issued bonds of major corporations and the U.S. government, are bought and sold, actually have a larger trading volume. Other examples of secondary markets are foreign exchange markets, futures markets, and options markets. Securities brokers and dealers, are crucial to a well-functioning secondary market. Brokers are agents of investors, who match buyers with sellers of securities. Dealers link buyers and sellers, by buying and selling securities, at stated prices. The other method of organizing a secondary market, is to have an over-the-counter, OTC, market, in which dealers at different locations, who have an inventory of securities, stand ready to buy and sell securities over the counter to anyone who comes to them, and is willing to accept their prices. Because over-the-counter dealers, are in computer contact, and know the prices set by one another. The OTC market is very competitive, and not very different, from a market with an organized exchange. Many common stocks are traded over the counter. Although a majority of the largest corporations, have their shares traded at organized stock exchanges such as the New York Stock Exchange. The U.S. government bond market, with a larger trading volume than the New York Stock Exchange, is set up as an over-the-counter market. 
40 or so dealers establish a market in these securities, by standing ready to buy and sell U.S. government bonds. Other over-the-counter markets include those that trade other types of financial instruments, such as negotiable certificates of deposit, federal funds, bankers' acceptances, and foreign exchange. Another way of distinguishing between markets is on the basis of the maturity of the securities traded in each market. The money market is a financial market in which only short-term debt instruments, generally those with original maturity of less than one year, are traded. The capital market is the market in which longer-term debt, generally those with original maturity of one year or greater, and equity instruments are traded. Money market securities are usually more widely traded than longer-term securities and so tend to be more liquid. In addition, as we will see in Chapter 4, short-term securities have smaller fluctuations in prices than long-term securities, making them safer investments. As a result, corporations and banks actively use the money market to earn interest on surplus funds that they expect to have only temporarily. Capital market securities, such as stocks and long-term bonds, are often held by financial intermediaries such as insurance companies and pension funds, which have little uncertainty about the amount of funds they will have available in the future. There you have it guys. The structure of the financial markets. To get the most out of this lesson. It will help if you watch this video two or three times. Don't forget to take down notes also. This is all for now. I'll see you next on the upcoming episode which is the lecture series part 3. There. We'll be sharing to you some knowledge about the functions of financial intermediaries, on the aspect of indirect finance. On behalf of my robotic training team. Thank you for watching this video. If you feel this video helped you in acquiring knowledge about the topic. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Have a good day. Ciao. Bye bye.